Twitter. President Muhammad Buhari on a visit to Plateau State inaugurates projects, launches roadmap to peace. I did call, call 511 Naira. May I help my husband? Issues affecting women in focus as Nigeria joins the rest of the world to celebrate Women's Day. And my age places a greater responsibility on me. This is coming from Vice President Yemi Oshibaju as he turns 61. Hello, good evening and welcome to NTN Network News tonight. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. I'm Joseph Johnson. Elizabeth Omorui joins me from Lagos while Kemi Akiwande standing by in Ibadan. It was a massive demonstration of love, solidarity, goodwill and cult-like following for President Muhammad Buhari in Jos, Plateau State, as he began a two-day official visit to the home of peace and tourism. State House correspondent Adam Osama reports that various infrastructure development projects executed as part of the rescue mission of the Lalong administration were inaugurated by the Nigerian leader. President Muhammad Buhari arrived in Yakubugawan Airport, Haipang, on his first official visit to Plateau State. Governor Simon Lalong, accompanied by his Nasarawa State counterpart Tanku Almakura, was at the head of the welcoming party, comprising people from all walks of life, irrespective of political party affiliation. And as the presidential motorcade headed for the city center, those who could not make it to the airport virtually took over the major highways to show love, affection, and adoration to the Nigerian leader. For the law enforcement agencies, it was a Herculean task controlling the solidarity songs chanting crowd as the president inaugurated the dual carriage major gateway to Plateau, named after him at Maraban Jamaa Secretariat Junction. A similar scenario prevailed at the inauguration of the Miango Wildlife Park, Rafiki Road, at the federal locals area of Jos Metropolis. Also inaugurated by the president is the Secretariat Junction flyover bridge and interchange. The project was inherited at 30% completion level by the Lalong administration. President Buhari thereafter proceeded to the palace of the Bongonjos on a courtesy visit where he commended the Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong for changing the face of Jos Metropolis through the provision of massive infrastructure. Having known uh, Plateau very well, I have been here for a couple of years as General Officer commanding the Armored uh, Division of the Nigerian Army. I know these streets that have been rehabilitated they used to only be uh, uh, suitable for young Achaba, but now they are double carriage with very well surface and with very good drainage. I think uh, uh, certainly the governor has something to show me. That's why he insisted I must come. I have seen it and I congratulate him. Uh, if we consider the resources we have between 1999 and 2014, and what we have now, from 2015 to now, I think uh, the governors are doing very well. The president used the opportunity to restate his resolve to fully secure the country for efficient management, saying, however, that traditional rulers need to do more in this regard. For you traditional rulers, we have to defend on you more on security. Uh, you have to uh, continue 
to preside over the leadership of people in your domains uh, throughout Nigeria, we cannot effectively maintain peace without your cooperation. The Igbongonjos, Jacob Gangbuba, also spoke in the same vein, saying God has a purpose for bringing President Muhammad Buhari at this critical moment in the nation's history. Issues of security are being unduly politicized. We call on politicians to watch it because it serves no one any good. It is our desire to assure Mr. President that we believe in one Nigeria and we must all put hands together to ensure the survival of this country. The Bongonjos, who is the chairman of the Plateau State Council of Traditional Rulers, made a case for more federal presence in the state. From Jos, Plateau State, Adam Musambu, NTA News. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari says the federal government will use the traditional institution in the country to achieve a lasting peace in some of the crisis-prone areas. He was speaking at a town hall meeting in Jos Plateau State, where he launched the state roadmap to peace in continuation of his engagement with relevant groups in the state security challenges. He said his visit to the crisis areas was to have first-hand information on the remote and immediate causes of the crisis with a view to ensuring a peaceful atmosphere. President Buhari said the federal government will continue to evolve ways of ensuring and engaging unemployed youths in the country. This project in Plato State. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I commend the principle of continuity adopted by the governor of Plato State, whereby he has continued with execution of projects abandoned by the previous administration. This approach has saved the state from waste and white elephant projects. Governor of Plateau State Simon Lalong said the five-year peace plan for the state is a deliberate attempt to redeem the lost glory of Plateau State as the home of peace. He said already the peace process is yielding results, hence the relative peace being enjoyed in the state. Other speakers at the town hall meeting commended the president for the outstanding leadership in the country. Wife of the President Aisha Mohamed Buhari has called on Nigerians to join her in, a, in an advocacy to bring to an end the abduction of Nigerian girls. Mrs. Buhari stated this during the 2018 International Women's Day celebrations put together by the National Center for Women Development in conjunction with the National Council for Women's Society and the Aisha Buhari Foundation. State House correspondent Aliyu Kabir reports. <laughs> Nigeria. The convergence of the Nigerian women from all walks of life, including those at the grassroots, to mark International Women's Day, set aside by the United Nations on March 8, is another milestone in the global effort towards addressing gender issues such as equal opportunity, sexual harassment, and all forms of violence and abuse against women. Stakeholders comprising the Director General National Center for Women Development, Mary Ita, the representative of the Governor's Wives, Dr. Zaina Bagudu, wife of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Gimbia Dogara, the President, NCWS, Laraba Shoda, and other MDAs as well as development partners explained that the essence was to reflect on these challenges and the achievements in the past affecting women in Nigeria and chart a new course for the way forward. To the wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, the 2018 Women's Day with a the theme, Press for Progress, is a reflection of the ugly incidents of abduction of schoolgirls by terrorists in Nigeria, especially the recent one in Dabchi, Yobe State. To that regard, she led in developing local theme, Leave Our Daughters Alone, with optimism of ending the menace and subsequently led to the release of the girls. It is a disturbing issue for which we must put our heads together pray, speak out, show and share concern and send goodwill to ensure that the situation will soon come to an end. To this effect, I wish to make an emphatic call to the individuals involved in abductions and other evil against our daughters to please, can you repeat after me three times, 
to please leave our daughters alone. Leave our daughters alone. Leave our daughters alone. Nigerian women are achieving in the arts, in literature, in science, in education, Princess. all over. On the other hand, we see our girls taken away from home, from school. We see parents crying. Mrs. Buhari urged all Nigerians to join hands in the advocacy to fight in the cause. In Abuja, Ali Wukabir, NTA News. And women gathered in Abuja to rub minds on the need to push forward gender equality and other issues affecting women in Nigeria. Basi Taikbang reports that the take home for them was leave our daughters alone, a new slogan by the president's wife, Aisha. Issues prominent at the 2018 International Women's Day celebration in Abuja were protection, security and development of the girl child. Women in rural, living in rural areas being the backbone of our economy. So it is right for us to celebrate them today. The Minister of Women Affairs and Rural Development, Aisha Jumai Al Hassan, stressed the need for the empowerment of women in inclusive governance. It is closely linked to their ability to access human rights, such as civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. In marking the day, the Nigerian Bar Association promised to make the International Women's Day part of its calendar annually. President of the Association, Abubakar Mohammed, says this is in recognition of the important role women play in the nation's law. It is clear to us, therefore, that while there had been tremendous progress in the Nigerian legal profession in terms of gender parity, much is left to be achieved. Meanwhile, the People Democratic Party celebrated the day, reminding women of its policy to give out free forms for women to contest elective position. You have kept quiet in our nation for too long, and that's why men are misbehaving. Yes. Also, a women pressure group, Women for Women across the divide, added its voice for a better deal for women. Women for Women calls on the National Assembly to take further steps in creating an enabling environment for the elimination of violence against women. The All Progressive Congress APC National Women Leader, Haja Ramatu Jijani Aliyu, in a statement reiterates the present government commitment to women's empowerment. Basi Taipan, NTA News. So talking about Women's Day, it's another International Women's Day and the same old narratives of creating enabling environment to empower women to participate in all spheres of national life to fast track the desired positive changes in the social, economic and political sectors are re-echoing. Mamsu Damien Dati in this special report uh, captures the essence of the 2018 theme which is Press for Progress. Many People's Day begins with the early morning car curl. For many women, it begins earlier than that. That is, if there is even an end or beginning to her day, as she serves in diverse capacities, a homemaker, mother, wife, and in many cases, official office worker or business to attend to. Drawing a line between meeting family needs and others is sometimes difficult. Mercy Alade, 26 years old, is a wife and mother of four, with her youngest barely five months old. Her day starts five in the morning, and the better part of it is spent selling oranges under harsh weather conditions. I they call, call five or one naira. May I help my husband? Mercy, like most Nigerian women, go through rigorous routine from dawn to dusk, being exposed to numerous challenges ranging from violence, rape, and victimization to abduction, gender, political, and economic disparities. The majority of our women are burdened with sexually transmitted diseases. Through that programs and policies have been evolved to address the challenges, but the gap still remains wide. We need to contribute our own quota. We've been doing a lot. As can now inherit properties, you know, that's the recent case from the Supreme Court. It's a very good precedent. The choice of this year's theme for International Women's Day Press for Progress offers another opportunity for the country to further consolidate on gains recorded to improve the lot of women. Women in the nation's capital took to the streets to make their voices heard 
on issues that concern them most. We are marching for gender balance and we are marching for peace. No to maternal death. With the government's effort towards empowering women, perhaps Mercy and the millions of Nigerian women will be better off and have some cheering stories to tell when the world marks this day next year in Abuja. Momsu Damien Dati, NTA News. Joining me to raise issues on women and national development is the President, National Council for Women's Societies, Mrs. Gloria Laraba Shuda. You're welcome to NTA Network News. Thank you. Now, this year's uh, theme uh, the, for the celebration is Press for Progress. Mm -hmm. Quite interesting, I must say. But how does this apply to the women? Well, um, this year's uh, theme, Press for Progress, means that something is happening. It means the women are not really doing a lot. They are not be, give, be, being given the chance to do a lot. So we are being asked to press for progress. Press for what you want. Whatever the women want to achieve, they should strive very, very hard to get it. Be it political empowerment, economic empowerment, financial empowerment, uh, any kind of empowerment, we should press for progress. We should not just stay behind and wait for people to bring it to us. We should be up and doing and try to grab that thing that we need. That's how I interpret it. Yes, but are, are the women, beyond the rhetorics, are the women properly positioned you know, for national development? Of course. The women are in national development all over the, the, uh, the states. Women are doctors, lawyers, business people. We have the, one of the richest women in, in, in Africa here in Nigeria. We have women in all fields. The only place we are lacking is political empowerment where, and then economic empowerment. You know, women don't have the, 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 the financial muscle to do a lot of things in politics. Women lack behind there, but in all other fields, academic, professional, women are, you know, they are, they are, they are trying their, their best to add to uh, the national development. Yeah, there's something that always intrigues me, you know, to see a woman, you know, in, in the political, you know, spheres. Also, what is your council doing to ensure that uh, you, the women have proper representation in a political uh, field? Well, we, are, we, we have started grouping and regrouping. We have started sensitizing women. We have started bringing ourselves together, all the different NGOs and uh, groups together, so that at, at least once in Nigeria we can have one voice. We can talk together and agree to support ourselves. Because the problem we have is that women do not support themselves. Women have the, poli uh, the, the number, they have the voice, but instead of using the voice for themselves, they use the voice for, 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 for men, let me say so. They, they use the voice to, to entertain and dance. Mm. But this time around, we are telling women to come out, to use that strength. Same voice. Yes, that same voice and that numerical strength that you have to support your own. Okay, just quickly, just give us just one word. You know, what, what would you say to the women being today is a Women International Day? I want to, to tell the women that you should come together and support yourself. That's very strong indeed. Thank you very much thank indeed, uh, Gloria uh, Laraba Shuda. Thank you for coming thank on you. NTN Network thank News. Thank you so much. All right, do stay with us here on NTN Network News. We take a break. We'll be back shortly. You are a superwoman. You saved the world time and time again. You put out fires with your bare hands. You end riots immediately with your X-ray vision stare. You feed a whole tribe from one tiny pot. And still find time to manage other nations. You give whole generations peace with the sound of your voice. You never really sleep. You're too busy making sure we're okay. And when the sun comes back up in the sky, it finds you at work, asking it why it took so long. Thank you for showing us what true love really means.
Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Kayo Defiemi, and Minister of State, Abu Bakar Bawabwari, will inaugurate appointed chairmen and members of the following boards. National Geological Survey Agency, National Steel Raw Materials Exploration Agency, the National Metallurgical Development Center, JOS, Council for Nigerian Mining Engineers and Geoscientists. Date, Monday, 12 March 2018. Venue, Ministry Conference Hall, Wuse 2, Abuja. Time, 11 a.m. Appointees are to come with a form of identification, updated CVs, and local government. Government certificates of origin. Announcer Dr. Abdul Kadir Muazu, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. All Progressive Congress APC Katna State Chapter invites you to a grand reception to welcome prominent politicians and their supporters who decamped the APC from opposition parties in the state. Decampees from PDP include Senator Ibrahim Ida, CEO and Damajan Kasana, Right Honorable Yao Umar Gwajogodo, former Speaker Katna State House of Assembly and his associates, Alaji Batura Umar Masari, former Director General PDP Katna State Campaign Organization for 2015 during election, Honorable Musa Adam Funtua, former Commissioner of Agriculture, and 264 councillors of the PDP defunct local government administration, Dr. Yusha Armaya, who former chairman PDM and 34 local government executives, and Alaji Ibrahim Abdullah Ori and his supporters from Afghan. Date, Saturday, 10th March 2018. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. Venue, Sa Osman Nagogo Polo Ground, Katsuna. Special guest of honor, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces Federal Republic of Nigeria. Guest of honor, Dr. John Oyegu, National Chairman, APC. Special guests, members of the APC National Board of Trustees and APC Governors of Northwestern State. Chief host, his Excellency, Right Honorable Amin Bellamasari, CFR, Governor Katna State, Aladji Shitu SC2, Chairman, APC Katna State, Announcer. The Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development wishes to inform the general public that the inauguration of chairmen and members of board of agencies under the ministry will now be in two badges. The first badge will hold tomorrow, Friday, 9th March 2018, at the NAF Center, Amadibelo Way, opposite Next Cash and Carry, Kado Abuja, at 5 p.m. prompt. Accreditation holds at the same venue, same day, from 2 p.m. Agencies to be inaugurated are as follows Agricultural Research and Management Institute, Ilori, National Center for Agriculture. Agricultural Mechanization, Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, Nigeria Stored Products Research Institute, Ilori, amongst others. Agencies whose names are not in the list will have their inauguration at a later date. Dr. Bukar Hassan, Permanent Secretary, Announcer. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country just away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. The Ministry of Budget and National Planning hereby announces the formal launch of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan ERGP Focus Labs. The launch will be performed by the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, on Tuesday, 13th March 2018, at the Banquet Hall of the State House Abuja at 11 a.m. All invitees are to take note of the new date. This event is strictly by invitation. Olajide Odewale, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Budget and National Planning, Announcer. Welcome to the world of Binani Printing Press, a leading printing company in West Africa with state-of-the-art printing machines. We offer solutions to all your printing needs with speed, quality, and timely delivery to customer satisfaction. Binani Printing Press offers a wide range of services, both in commercial and security printing. Our operational capabilities compete favorably with any international printing firm in terms of technology, quality, and efficiency. Our capacity and efficiency defines us as the largest press in West Africa. Make it to Binani Printing Press today for your world-class printing. We are located at Plot A00-1153, Central Business District, Abuja. Call us on 706 819 7677 
0807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807-807
And so we'll get to the root of it. Dennis Adignoy, NTA News. Meanwhile, Speaker Yakubu Dugara has commended President Muhammad Buhari for strictly adhering to the provisions of the Constitution in bill process. The acknowledgement came when Representative Uzoma Nkem Abunta raised a point of order on the need for the House to regazette bills rejected by the President. Opening the constitutional order. 58 for of the Constitution says where a bill is presented to Mr. President for assent, he shall within 30 days thereof signify that he has sent or that he withholds assent. Whoever is the president is under a duty to signify whether he has sent or not. But um, in this case, I will say this to the credit of the president, really. There's never a time he has kept a bill with him for more than 30 days. Never. Um, it's either he agrees, he assents, or he sends them back to us with explanation as to why he is convinced that he will not give his assent. Speaker Dogara also disproved, uh, disapproved allegations that the House of Representatives is responsible for the delay in the passage of the Nigeria Financial Intelligence Unit. Says the bill was only undergoing constitutional process of the bill passage. The House of Representatives has reassured Nigeria women of its avowed commitment in providing legal framework for gender parity and uh, women empowerment in the country. This came to the fore when members marked the 2018 International Women's Day. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo has more. The motion to commemorate the International Day of Women was moved by the Chairman House Committee on Women Affairs, Representative Stella Ngu. Support Nigerian women in the campaign and quest for gender mainstreaming and parity in Nigeria. The important thing is that women have to be empowered what women are asking for is just equal space. For me, as an advocate of the girl child education, it is a setback for me to see girls being abducted as a mother, as a woman, as a sister to all those girls. I feel the pains, I bear the pains of the parents of those girls. All the same as we celebrate today, we commend the men all over the world, especially the ones in these hallowed chambers who have supported us over the years. Security issues also featured on the floor as Representative Mohammed Nuru Sharif from Borno State moved the motion of urgent public importance for authorities to strengthen security around aid workers and internally displaced persons in the Northeast, especially in Borno State. While Representative Hassan Saleh called on the Inspector General of Police and related agencies to ensure the arrest of perpetrators of what he described as ongoing killings in Benue State. The motion on the need to ensure that all local and international markets in the federal capital territory are fortified with fire prevention and extinguishing gadgets was adopted as moved by Representative Ferdinand Wankwa from Anambra State. To call on the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to as a matter of urgency, send relief materials to the victim of fire disasters, particularly those of Dede International Timber Market. The Bills Fund Act to establish the Federal College of Agriculture, Kunchi, Kano State, sponsored by Representative Sani Sanyawa, and another one for the establishment of Federal Investor of Technology, Auchi, a Do State, sponsored by Representative Johnson Oguma, were passed for second reading. Four bills were passed for third reading, including that for the establishment of the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit from the National Assembly, Nations, Nkwo, NTN News. In another front, as the world marks the 2018 Women's Day, Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Amefiele, is conversing for gender diversity in the workplace. Leah Katun Babatunde reports that Apex Bank is taking a lead role in ensuring gender equality in the nation's financial sector. I can assure you of management's commitment to step up action to diversify corporate leadership at the Central Bank of Nigeria and indeed in the banking industry. 
This obviously is a solution to imbalance that is lacking in many workplaces. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin MFLA, is concerned. Despite all efforts, the place of women in the banking sector is still not an easy ride like their male counterparts. Having been blessed with the same skills and opportunities that there should be for men, that they should still be allowed to pursue their careers while at the same time making it possible and easy for them to be able to take care of their children even while at their place of work. The Sustainable Development Goal number 5 readily comes to mind, which is achieving gender equality and empower all women and girls. Our very presence here today is a manifestation of our great resolve to carry forward this noble task of advancing our commitment, resilience and strength. And so the women at the Central Bank of Nigeria came out in their numbers to share experiences and forge ties to meet this goal. Souvenirs here locally made and the bags designed by Nema Kamwosisi, a UN beneficiary who now employs 15 persons and has branches across the country. I started my business in 2011 making Ankara bags and I graduated to making leather bags about three years ago. All our bags are handmade and handcrafted in our factory here in Abuja. The ultimate goal of the celebration here is to give equal opportunities to reduce poverty and lack that are prevalent in women. In Abuja, I'm Leka Tungbaba today, NTA News. Now let's get more stories now on NTA Network News as we join Elizabeth in our Lagos Network Center. Hello Joseph and a warm welcome to Lagos. Business mogul Aliko Dangote has donated a 1.2 billion ultramodern business call to the Bayeri University, Kano, to stimulate entrepreneurial development in the country. The business tycoon says he expects the beneficiaries to reciprocate the gesture by contributing to the economic growth of the country through quality training and research. The ultramodern complex, which was commissioned by the Emir of Kano, is one of several philanthropic gestures by Dangote Group aimed at increasing capacity in viable economic strategies. The edifice christened Dangote Business School is expected to ease the exchange of information among African future leaders on how to advance their businesses as well as boost the continent's economic value. The business tycoon emphasized that meaningful collaboration between the universities and industries must be strengthened if the continent must fashion out workable policies that will address its inherent challenges. His Royal Highness for always encouraging me to do more for every single time when you call me, the call is always to encourage me to do more for my future and also the future of our country. The event was a platform for discussions on creating an enabling environment for business to thrive while encouraging others to emulate the gesture. Well being and curious, well, well being images of Kano investing in education. That is how you need to think. we pray that you will create some little time to interact with the staff, management, and students of this business school so that they learn quite a lot from what Allah has. The ultra modern business complex, which consists of lecture theaters, libraries, and offices, Dangote says will soon be affiliated to the Advert Business School. The need for regular medical checkups, monitoring of our dietary lifestyle, and indulging in physical exercise have been emphasized. Medical experts give this advice in a sensitization work exercise as part of activities marking the 2018 World Kidney Day celebration in Lagos. Tunde Saiki reports. The theme for the 2018 World Kidney Day celebration is kidney and women's health include value and power. To mark the day in Lagos, some non-governmental organizations stage a walk around some major streets in Ikeja GROA. At the end of the rally, Participants were enlightened on how they could protect themselves from kidney-related diseases. Uh, men have what they call prostate, and as they grow older, it grows bigger. Sometimes it becomes cancerous. Now, if there is any blockage along that line, it creates a back pressure and burden on the kidney. And it 
can also cause kidney failure. The kidneys and the high blood pressure have link. It can actually arise from that place. But if you do not avail yourself for a medical check, you won't be able to know. So awareness is key. They need to know that it is treatable. If you increase the consciousness about the existence of kidney problem, people will not wait until they fall sick. Organizers of the event observe that approximately 195 million women worldwide are affected by kidney-related diseases and currently the eighth leading cause of their death. Also, this is the opportunity to call on government to assist people with kidney diseases. Those who need dialysis, the government should supplement. The World Kidney Day is a day set aside annually to raise awareness on the importance of the kidney to the overall health of humans. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this time out. Stay with us. The Nigeria Police Force has commenced the disarmament and recovery of prohibited firearms, ammunition and weapons in possession of all suspected militias, armed herdsmen and farmers, bandits, vigilante groups, neighborhood watch and other groups, individuals or bodies. The range of firearms include artillery, apparatus for the discharge of any explosives of gas diffusing projectile, rocket weapons, bombs and grenades, machine guns and machine pistols, all kinds of military rifles, revolvers and pistols, whether rifled or unrifled. All categories of pump action guns and any other firearm or lethal weapon fabricated to kill. Members of the public are hereby warned and given 21 days starting from the 22nd of February 2018 to surrender them to the Commissioner of Police in the state they are domiciled. Members of the public who notice anyone bearing, possessing or in custody of any kind of firearm should report such to the DIG operations and others listed below. This message is from the Force Public Relations Department. Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, brings a new lease of life to Nigeria SMEs. SON has put a greater premium on developing standards to improve made in Nigeria products for export. We have developed more standards for products like Sesame, Coco, Gary, and more, courtesy of our accredited state-of-the-art laboratories. In keeping with the federal government's ease of doing business, SON has simplified its processes and turned around time for SOMCAP, MANCAP, and other certification processes. SON has intensified market surveillance, raids, and seizures to reduce substandard products in circulation, and offenders shall be prosecuted. Join SON in reading our nation of substandard products. If you see something, say something. Standards Organization of Nigeria, improving lives through standards. Sensitivity is a short pain which occurs when teeth are exposed to hot, cold, or acidic things. Cold water from the fridge would, would trigger off sensitivity. A lot of people would accept anyway and just grin and bear the pain. What I would say to the patient is switch to Sensodyne, make it your daily toothpaste over a period of time would reduce tooth sensitivity. And a lot of them come back to, to, you know, to thank me, to say that, wow, it's just something so simple. It adds the sparkle back into their life. <laughs> I could not see people pass with this, so... Everybody, take comments for an call. Yes, now. Nah. Just here. Yeah. Drink. Comix. Now, easy to use solution for itchy cup. Comix. Easy to use. Carry one. Achievers always believe in 100%. Breakfast isn't complete without Chavita 100% fruit juice. Made from real natural fruits with no added sugar. So, to be at your best, start every day the Chavita 100% way. With 100% quality. 100% commitment, 100% goodness, 100% achievement. Start your day the Chavita 100% way. Don't you? Three Crowns Milk is low in cholesterol and endorsed by the Nigerian Heart Foundation. Three Crowns Milk, healthy mums, happy families. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Now, we are not done with uh, Women's Day celebration yet because the Akwabum State Governor Udomi Manuel says the state government has set up a special court for speedy dispensation of justice for rape victims. He stated this while addressing a cross section of women who converged on Ibom Hall grounds, venue of this year's International Women's Day celebration in the state. Edidion Iba has the report. 
The women came in their numbers to make their voices heard and to press for their demands, among which is more inclusion in governance. Akwaibom State's Governor Udomi Manuel, who sued for unity among the women, noted that until they present a united front, they may not achieve much. As women are praising for progress, we are putting up a serious fight against rape to make sure we put an end to it. Please don't fail to report it completely to us. We will not expose that child, but we need to bring those people to book. Wife of Akwaibom State Governor Martha Udomi Manuel and others in their remarks stressed the need for women to support each other, saying the day is a constant reminder of the fact that nothing can be achieved by mere wishes. For us to achieve this great goal, we must unite together. We must defend ourselves. We must love ourselves. We must speak with one voice. We must encourage one another. That is the only way we can press for progress. The celebration with the theme Press for Progress featured various competitions, including March Pass, as well as exhibitions by women from the 31 local government areas of the states. In Uyo, Edith Yongiba, NTA News. Let's talk business now. Nigeria's natural gas reserves rises by 4.06 trillion cubic feet, and equities market closes on a positive note. Details with Chiazala Meke on Business News. A very warm welcome to Business News. Nigeria's external reserve has risen to $43.2 billion from the $43.76 billion recorded earlier in the month, the Central Bank of Nigeria says. According to the data, the reserves reached a four-year high at $42.76 billion on March 2nd, after gaining about $3.99 billion in 2018. Experts attribute the rise to steady increase in global oil prices and federal government's eurobond bond among others. The rise could also be attributed to improved foreign exchange inflow occasioned by increase in global oil price dollar inflow from foreign portfolios investors. Mr. Godwin Emefele, the governor of the central bank, had predicted that the reserves could hit $60 billion in 2019 if it maintains this trend. And similarly, Nigeria's natural gas reserves has risen by 4.06 trillion cubic feet from 187.9 trillion cubic feet. The Nigerian Natural Resource Charter in its benchmarking report says the reserves include associated and non-associated gas. The report notes that Nigeria remains one of the largest producers of natural gas and has become a major exporter of gas globally. And as Nigeria joins the world to mark International Women's Day, there has been a concerted call for more job creation and financial empowerment for the women folk, even as the World Bank has rated women as the largest contributors to the economy. It's not enough to just train people and leave them on their own without the required capital to start up. You know, so when we train, we finance. And to the money market, the Naira is likely to remain stable with the support by dollar flows from exporters and in addition with the central bank's interventions in the currency markets. World oil steadied on Thursday after falling the previous day on the back of record of United States crude production. And trading on the equities market closed on a positive note today as the all share index appreciated by 0.33%. Unilever, Stambic, and Guinness led the Guinness table, while Presco, Dangote Cement, and Dangote Sugar led the Lagos table. Cap Oil, Japol Oil, and Multivest were the most traded stock. That's the package. The news continues. I'm Chia Zalam Ekie. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has restated Nigeria's readiness to showcase the country's rich culture and abundant talent as she programs to host global key players in the tourism sector. The minister stated these while addressing the United Nations World Tourism Meeting of African Ministers of Tourism under the aegis of the Secretary General of the World Tourism Organization, Zura Plolish Kavili, in Berlin. 
Lai Mohammed assured that the June CAF meeting in Abuja will reshape the focus of investors in the sector, just as it plans to use the platform to rebrand tourism. Speaking to NTA shortly after the meeting, Lai Mohammed expressed satisfaction with the response by the African ministers. We are all very eager to come. Uh, we are very passionate to come. Uh, we are all seeing Abuja as a uh, you know, uh, CAF meeting as a very important uh, meeting. And I think we've always come it on their calendar. I look forward to a very high percentage of attendance. Correspondent Anthony Fawkson reports that the meeting is to take stock of all commitments received from member states during the future meeting in Madrid, Spain, concerning UNTWO Agenda for Africa. Details will come in a subsequent bulletins. Works Power and Housing Minister inspects federal housing projects in Oshobo. These and more with Kemi in Ibadan Network Center. Kemi, happy Women's Day. Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to Ibadan. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babasunde Fashola, says the federal government housing program will address the housing deficit being faced by Nigerians. He stated this through a representative while inspecting a federal government housing scheme in Ocean State. Femi Afarogun has the details. The housing project in Ocean State, situated in Abiri, Eden North local government area is a replica of what the federal government is currently doing in 34 states, including the Federal Capital Territory. It comprises of 28 two-bedroom semi-detached units, 16 three-bedroom semi-detached units, and a condominium block consisting of 24 housing units. The Southwest Zona Director of National Housing Program or Lasso Komidu Mui, who expressed satisfaction with the level of work done so far, said the program was achieving its goals. My trip around Southwest, Osho State, is lady. I'm impressed with what I've seen here. This project has generated about 2,500 jobs. When completed, the Mui assured that modality will be put in place to ensure the houses are allocated to ordinary Nigerians. In Oshogo, Femi Afariogun, NTA News. 111 unemployed youths from the southwest as well as Kwara and Kogi states have undergone two weeks intensive training in agriculture and vocational skills. The training under the federal government's National Youth Empowerment Program was to reduce unemployment in Nigeria. Femi Afariogun again covers the closing ceremony at Ojeomu in Ocean State. Areas the 111 unemployed youths were trained on include aquaculture, livestock farming, crop production, event management, art and bead making, and entrepreneurship development. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Solomon Dalong, represented by the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Adeshola Olushade, said President Mohamed Buhari remained committed to reducing unemployment. All that we have provided is just a platform for you to rise. We believe that through their uh, commitment to this process and through their uh, dedication to it, they will go beyond what we can imagine. But this one is productive engagement. You see something coming out from this one, particularly that they have been empowered. The youths expressed readiness for the task ahead. I've learned a lot of things. They taught us how to process, I mean, how to plant cassava and how to process it to Gary and some other things like uh, vitamin A chips and some other things. There was exhibition by the participants from Odeomu in Oshun State, Femi Afariogun, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to you, Joseph. Came here from Ibadan Network Center there. The federal government policy on ease of doing business is gradually yielding desired results as local manufacturers open up more outlets for economic growth. Shehu Adamu reports that one of such outlets is the Royal West African Ceramics that is promoting made in Nigeria products and creating jobs and wealth for team in Nigeria's youth. Among the policy initiatives of the Buhari administration are the promotion of made in Nigeria products, wealth and job creation through economic diversification. To complement government's effort in that direction, the West African Ceramics 
has keyed into the initiative utilizing local raw materials in the production of ceramics of international standard. These tiles made with all Nigerian materials, Nigerian manpower, trained manpower, and uh, uh, made in Nigeria. Against the backdrop of the ease of doing business policy of the present administration, West African Ceramics has opened up outlets in eight states of the country, creating job opportunity for hundreds of youth. I declare it open by cutting this term. There were goodwill messages applauding the contributions of a private company to achieving economic diversification and job creation in the country. Let us patronize Nigerian made products. Honestly, from today, I am going to do and use and think made in Nigeria. Nigerian products are of high quality. Royal products, more especially, is of international standard. The inauguration of its showroom in Kaduna is the latest of such outlets. Shehu Adamu, News. We have the very latest in the world of sports for you, but that will come after the break. Stay with us. With deep sense of loss and gratitude to God for a life well lived, the Shagaya family announces the passage of its patriarch, Senator General Dr. John Nanzib Shagaya, OFR, Damburam Langtang. He is survived by five children, nine grandchildren, two sisters, and numerous cousins, nephews, and nieces. Burial events are as follows 15th March 2018 at 4 30 p.m., service of songs at the Shagaya family residence, number four, Shagaya Place, Golden Bay's Jaws. 16th March 2018 at 10 a.m. funeral service at Koking Central Langtang, followed by internment at the Kuzwang family burial ground Langtang at 2 p.m. Deception comes up the same day at the Shagaya family residence corner, John Shagaya and Joe Garba streets respectively Langtang at 3.30 p.m. Announcer Cornel Nansak Shagaya for the family. This is to announce the burial rites of Mama Esther Oyeje Adole, aged 72 years. Funeral arrangements is as follows. Friday 9th March 2018 Christian will keep at half family Compound Nwaba Iyoba, Uboju, Otupo local government area of Benue State. Saturday, 10th March, funeral commendation at Methodist Church Nwaba Iyoba, Uboju, Otupo local government area. Time 9 a.m. Internment follows immediately at her family compound Nwaba Iyoba, Uboju, Otupo local government area. Reception follows at same venue. Mr. Philip E. E. Adole for the family announcer. <laughs> Let's bring you sports now. Nigeria drops one sport in latest FIFA ranking as top seeds battle in a co-golf challenge. Samara Bire is a guide on sports update.